Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for Church Online on this Easter morning. We are excited to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ with you. Before we get started, let me encourage you, engage with us, share, like, or comment. We actually have moderators who are waiting to serve you as you watch today. Before we get to singing, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for Easter. We ask that you would bless our time, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would change our hearts and minds however you need to this morning so that we could better live in the life that you have planned for us. Help us to receive all that you have for us this morning. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Happy Easter, everyone. Again, thanks for joining us for Church Online. We are excited to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ with you. You know, recently, the opportunity to celebrate seems more special, especially after the past year. As you know, our world was flipped upside down because of the pandemic. Everything changed. People got sick, many died, fear was spread, some lost jobs, and for a while, the safest place you could be was at home. But even there, even here at home, we would begin to battle the effects of isolation. And so this whole time has been exhausting. It's been difficult. And at times, if we're honest, it we've wondered or, or at least considered giving up. But that's begun to change because, as you know, there is a vaccine now and it appears to be highly effective. And for the first time in over a year, we can see a light at the end of the tunnel and into this tragedy and craziness. However, the world has always been a, a wild place, and there's a reason for that. I'll mention it a little bit later. But even back in Jesus' day, it was crazy. And one of Jesus' closest followers was, was named Peter. And, and after Jesus returned back to heaven, Peter became the leader of the church or the group of people who were committed to following Jesus. And he had to lead them through crazy times. For example, there was an emperor named Nero and he was crazy. He did things like setting his own city on fire and then he blamed Christians for it. And tradition says that he would use Christians as tiki torches to light his dinner parties. And, and so it was a crazy time and many in that time were living in fear and people were persecuted and killed for being Christians. It was, it was the ultimate cancel culture. And if they didn't like your beliefs, like following Jesus, they canceled you. You'd be an outcast. You couldn't find a job. Or as I mentioned, they would literally cancel your life. And it's in this context that Peter writes a letter that's filled with instructions to the church on how they can live in a world like that, a, a broken world filled with suffering. And this Easter, I'd like to share three thoughts from his first letter that I believe can help us find hope today in the midst of our difficult times. And so here's the first thought. In his letter, Peter teaches that suffering brings life. Now, I know that sounds super strange. Usually life is about avoiding suffering and rightfully so. But sometimes suffering has a purpose and has a good purpose. And that's something that Peter discovered as the church suffered in his day. He saw that God was doing something wonderfully beautiful through the pain. And I know that sounds weird, it sounds foreign, it sounds uncomfortable, but we actually understand this. Often we willingly apply this mindset to our lives today. You know, there are a few runners in our church, including myself, and most of the world considers our hobby or our sport suffering. And we runners get it, running, running is intentionally making your body suffer. My oldest son said the other day, in the morning, dad walks like he got hit by a car. And it's true. That's how I walk in the morning as I'm trying to recover. And, and, and summer is coming up and I have this year decided to train for a second marathon. And, and a marathon is basically paying money to suffer. For four months during the summer, you wake up at like 4 a.m. to run three to four hours on Saturday. And that doesn't even include the other four days of running through the week. And I can tell you from experience, you are constantly in pain. And, and, and remember, it's, it's summer. So at least here in Connecticut, it is hot and it is humid. And then after those four months, one day... In October, you willingly run four to five hours so that you can be stuck in bed for the next four to five days recovering. So why would I choose to suffer like that? Well, because it makes me stronger and I, I'm able to accomplish personal life goals. 
There are kids in our church who play football. And as one of the assistant football coaches, I know that these kids kind of suffer when they play football. They, they, they beat up their bodies for two hours, three times a week, and that's just practice. They crash into each other's. They, they do up-downs in that same Connecticut humidity and, and heat. They do wind sprints after a full day of school. Why would they choose to suffer like this? Well, it's because they love the sport and, and it adds value to their life to be part of the team. And additionally, many willingly suffer and sacrifice for a better future. We will lose sleep. We will operate in exhaustion. Sometimes we, we even go back to school. We sacrifice. We go without things to pay off debt. I, I think of, of the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness. You, have you ever seen that? But it, that dude suffered. Why? So that he could make a better life for his family. And all of these things that I've just mentioned are examples of choosing to suffer. So why would someone willingly suffer? Well, because suffering brings life. And the greatest example of this is seen in Jesus. Let me share our main Easter passage for today. 1 Peter 3.18 says, Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. This one verse summarizes the meaning of Easter. Jesus, the son of God, the second person of the Trinity, stepped out of eternity and into space and time. He humbled himself and he took on human flesh. He was born of a virgin and then he lived a perfect and innocent life. That means he never sinned. But then he willingly died and suffered on a cross for us as a sinner. He absorbed the wrath of God, the holy judgment that we deserve because of our sins. And yet, three days later, what happens? He rose unto new life, showing that death and sin had been defeated, that sin had been paid for. And now, anyone who will turn from their sin and put their faith in Jesus will be brought safely home to God. That's what Easter is all about. And I'm sure you noticed the word suffering just in that verse is there twice. Why? Because by suffering, eternal life came. God strategically uses suffering to bring life. And that's something that Peter is teaching the church. That suffering is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it is a life-giving thing. Christ suffered and then he rose to new life. Christ suffered and eternal life became available to the world. And now the church under Peter's leadership was suffering. And Peter is telling them, don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Actually, let the trials and the suffering run its course because what you will see, what you will experience, what you will discover is that God is using it to bring new life. He is using it in our lives for good. And I think some of us need to hear this today because the pandemic, the suffering that we've been going through has beat us up or just maybe life in general continues to beat us up. And, and maybe some of us are experiencing this and we've been trying to follow Jesus, but the suffering continues and we don't understand why. Well, if, if that's you, remember this, that God is, is in control and that he has a plan for our lives, for your life. And if you will trust him with the process, you will see that he has a purpose for the suffering you're experiencing. He is using it and is going to use it to bring new life. 
And, and I want to encourage you, have confidence that he, that's God who began a good work in your life is going to be faithful to finish it. And, and that, that that's from Philippians 1, 6. Let me also encourage you, memorize that and repeat it. Think about that verse often, especially during these hard times. You know, there's a pastor named Craig Rochelle, and he says, the more you think about something, the easier it becomes to think about. And that our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. That, that's the way that God has designed our brain to work. Therefore, if we're suffering, repeating God's promises can help transform our thinking regarding the suffering that we're experiencing. And pretty soon, when we keep doing this process, we will start to see that suffering in Christ is actually something that is bringing life, that there is purpose in these difficult seasons. Also, let me encourage you that while you're going through this process to pray. Talk to God about your suffering. God is personal and he is not a God of confusion. He wants to reveal his plans to you. Jeremiah 33 says, ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about the things to come. Ask God to give you clarity about what's going on in your life. And here's an important step connected to prayer. After you pray, put yourself in a position to listen. Read your Bible. Come to life group. Make sure that you show up for church or church online each week. You got to put yourself in a place where you are ready and able to hear God's voice of clarity. Well, moving on, let's look at the second thought. Number two, suffering reminds us that this is not our home. The reason why suffering exists in the first place is because this world is broken. And so when you see suffering, you should think, this place is broken. When you experience suffering, you should remember this place is broken. Suffering is evidence that things are not right. This is not the way that God, who is perfect, holy, and good, this is not the way that God intended it to be. This is not normal. It's similar to seeing people with masks on. You know, masks are evidence that something is wrong in our community, that, that the things are not normal right now. Suffering, in a similar way, can wake us up to the reality that this is not the way that things are supposed to be. And God uses suffering to remind us that this is not our home. So don't hang on to the stuff here too tightly. And don't put your hope in what's here. Because we're not supposed to be comfortable here. We aren't made for a world filled with suffering. Just like it'll never be normal or comfortable to wear a mask, wearing a mask bothers us because it's not the way that it should be. And in the same way, suffering should bother us too. Peter says about suffering, so then since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. You see, God uses suffering to bring us to a place where we begin to think, I am so tired of sin. I, I am over it. It destroys my life. It destroys others' lives. This is not the life that I want. I want something different. I want to experience God's life. And I can't wait for heaven. I can't wait for the day when Jesus makes everything right. That's my living hope. And when we begin to think this way, when this happens, all of a sudden, suffering becomes a catalyst for encouragement because it is freeing us from this broken world and it's pushing us towards eternal life with God where we're supposed to be. You know what's strange? 
Peter's letter that right that we're discussing that that's filled with these discussions on suffering is intended to be a letter of encouragement. We are supposed to read this letter in the middle of suffering and come out encouraged. And that happens when we begin to have an eternal perspective. When we look to our future hope, the promise of heaven found in Jesus. And again, we, we kind of know what this is like. We kind of understand this. It, it's the feeling that many of us have right now because right now we're still in the middle of a pandemic. People are still getting sick. There's still a risk, but there's an effective vaccine. The suffering isn't over yet, but because there's a vaccine, we can see the finish line ahead. And this future hope, this this this, this finish line that we can see it, just a little bit ahead of us, it, it changes our perspective. And, and, and we're encouraged to endure a little longer, even though currently the circumstances haven't changed much or at all. And when you suffer in Christ, let me tell you, be encouraged by focusing on your future hope and remembering that this is not our home. And when you do, you will gain victory in your life over this broken life. When we focus on heaven, sin and death become less attractive and that stuff begins to lose its hold on our hearts as we begin to long for our true home, which is with God. And here's our third and final thought from Peter. Just to recap, number one, suffering brings life. Number two, suffering reminds us that this is not our home. And number three, it also brings others home. Let me explain. Again, 1 Peter 3.18 says, Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. When Christ suffered, it was to bring us safely home to God. Our sin separated us from God. But because of Jesus' cross and resurrection, we can come safely home to God. The Apostle Paul put it this way. Romans 5.2 says, Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we can confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. And here's what Peter wants us to understand. Yes, Christ's suffering brings us safely home to God, but once that happens, he also uses our lives to bring more people safely home. God uses faithful suffering as a light in a world of darkness. People will begin to see us suffering right next to them, but not reacting in the same way that everybody else is reacting. Instead, they see peace and joy and encouragement. And they know that something is different. And they begin to ask, how can you have hope at a time like this? How can you have hope right now? Which is why Peter says, hey, 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 if someone asks you about the hope that you have as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Always be ready to give an answer why. In other words, your suffering, if you'll let it, your suffering becomes an opportunity to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And don't we all want that? Don't we all want to belong to something that matters? Well, through suffering, God invites us to be a part of the greatest rescue mission. When we're willing to suffer in Christ, we get opportunities to explain to others that all of this suffering is happening because the world is broken and that sin has ruined everything. And, and that's, that's the reason for the ever-present craziness that I, I mentioned earlier. But then, after we tell them that, then we get to share the hope of Easter, that through faith in Jesus, we can come safely home to God. And not only that, they can too, if they will put their faith in Jesus. So let me ask, are, are you suffering today? Well, consider this. What if through your suffering... God is bringing about life. 
What if through your suffering, God is giving hope? What if through your suffering, God is using you to bring others safely home to God? I don't know about you, but if that is happening through my suffering, that seems worth it. This temporary suffering, again, if all of this is happening in that way, according to God's plan, with that type of glorious end in mind, this suffering, this temporary suffering, that can't compare to that glorious future that we are going to experience when we arrive safely home in heaven. And so I say, if, if I have to suffer, to experience eternal life, so be it. If I have to suffer to be re reminded of my living hope, so be it. If I have to suffer so that others can be brought safely home to God, so be it. Although this has been a tough year, what if this Easter, God is telling us that it's all been for a beautiful purpose, that it's bringing about eternal life, that it's spreading hope and it's bringing people safely home to God by faith in Jesus Christ. If that's true, that, that should change our perspective on the difficult things that we're experiencing, the suffering, everything that we've been through the past year. Paul said in Philippians 1, For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. It is a privilege for God to use our suffering to bring people safely home. And so if you have had a rough year, be encouraged. Trust in Christ. Have hope. He is preparing you for something beautiful. As we close, I, I want to speak to anyone who may not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Maybe you've been listening for the past 22 minutes and, and some of this stuff is beginning to connect with you because you have had a tough year too and, and maybe you'd even call it suffering and you have asked the question, why is all of this happening? Well, I don't think I could answer that question definitively, but I can give you confidently the following statement. I believe that God is both all-powerful and in control. That means that there is no such thing as a coincidence or an accident, especially when it comes to the things of God. There's, there's only purpose. And, and I believe that if you are watching this video right now, it's because God loves you, and wants your attention and has used everything that's been going on in your life, even sufferings, to bring you to this moment right now. And in this moment, he is inviting you to come safely home. We've been talking about it so far, but because of the vaccine, COVID-19 is almost over. Soon enough, the pandemic protocols will end and life will take on some sort of normality. Yet, let me just say, there remains another invisible enemy that is infinitely more deadly than COVID. It has a 100% mortality rate and no amounts of quarantine, masks, or social distancing can help with it because we are born with it in us. And it's called sin. We're all infected and there's nothing we can do about it. But 2,000 years ago, God did something about it. He sent a cure and his name is Jesus. Romans 5, 8 says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And, and this cure, this sin vaccine, is available to you right now. You know, earlier this week, I turned 41, which also means that at least here in Connecticut, I became eligible to receive the COVID vaccine uh, on Thursday. And, and I woke up on that day at 4 a.m. and I spent hours searching for an available vaccine appointment. Well, let me, let me just assure you 
that you don't need to worry about finding an appointment time for the forgiveness of sin. There is an appointment available right now wherever you are watching. The gospel or the good news is that the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you will right now confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you right now will be saved. You will come safely home to God. It's, it is is that easy because Jesus did all the work by his grace for us on that first Easter. He, he cleared the way so that we could come safely home. And all we got to do is accept that gift of salvation by faith. And when you do, you'll never again have to worry about sin, suffering, and death because you're safely home with God. Will you do that today? If you'd like to come home to God this Easter, pray this with me. God, I need you. I'm so tired of this brokenness. I'm so tired of sin. I'm ready to experience life the way that you intended it to be. But I know I can't have that unless I first repent, unless I turn away from my sin and put my faith in Jesus. And so I am ready to do that today. I want to come home to you. And so please forgive me for my sin. And I trust in what Jesus did on the cross to pay for my sins. And I believe in my heart that he rose from the dead three days later, showing that he defeated sin and death, that the payment for my sin was paid in full. And now I am ready to follow you for the rest of my life, no matter what that looks like, no matter the sacrifice, no matter the suffering. Because you know what? This is not my home anyways. And my hope isn't here on earth. You are my living hope, and I'm ready to come home to you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us for Easter Online. If this was your first time, fill out a connect card. We would love to say hi to you and even send you a gift. Also, if you have any prayer requests, would like to know more about the River Church, or if you just prayed that prayer and decided to follow Jesus today, we definitely want to hear from you. And there's an easy way to do that, to let us know that you are watching and, and that you want information or that you made a decision for Jesus by going to our website, riverchurchct.com, or you can follow the links posted in the comments below or you can text TRC Easter to 94,000. Whichever way that you choose, someone will reach out to you shortly. God bless you. Have a great Easter.
on church, sing that again.